Okay. We're at the back drive. Here's a back garage car alley, garage car entrance. This is the vertical casement and trim board, and it's separating from the brickwork right here on the left side. And the house faces north, so that makes this the west side of the garage. It's a metal garage car door. The casement has been cut up off of the driveway surface, which is good, but we still have, there's a little bit of repair in here. I don't know if you can see that. A little bit of repair and wood rot on this side. That would be the east side of the garage car entry door. It's, like I said, it's a metal panel door. Then around here in some places we have a little bit, that's called parge coating. It's okay. Some people call these corner pops with their shrinkage cracks on the corners. You're not going to have an issue with that. Maybe a brick issue if it comes out, but that's not a foundation issue. And speaking of foundation issues, we've had some kind of repair along this wall. I don't know if piers were installed or not, but even backfilling is, is a form of foundation repair. But something's been going on here, that's for sure. Electric power enters low grade on the east side of the garage car. The garage um, box should have been sealed to help prevent moisture infiltration into the wall system. Um, that's the grounding right there and we can't see it because it's been covered which is proper and we have weep holes along the foundation perimeter this is the water heater vent i'm expecting to see a tankless water heater in there then over here these are the temperature pressure relief valve drains or the pressure relief valve drain depending and these drains should not discharge higher than six inches from the ground and this one on the right our right it definitely is and um, we'll have to go inside and check that out it's PVC we have high soil conditions right in there that's the closed dryer vent we have wood to ground contact right here this is the bay window this is the breakfast area I believe and maybe the dining breakfast area I believe wood to ground contact high soil conditions all along here as well there's been a little bit of wood repair over here there's been some things going on okay on the roof covering composition shingles medium grade and what we have here is uh, the satellite dishes they're never installed properly it's not and it'll be on the report but you'll never find that we got a little bit of wood damage on this east wall where they brought in the um, um, telecommunications the cable whatnot gas meter is on the east side of the house I don't see any bonding here so we're going to be looking for bonding other places of the house. The rain gutters are below grade. We've got negative drainage towards the house. Uh, trees shouldn't be closer than 20 feet to the structure. And over here, what we have is this is a sump pump, probably because of the negative drainage. The drainage comes down here. That's a sump pump, and then that is a vacuum breaker for the swimming pool main drain. Now wood mulch should not be underneath the eaves because then that's conducive to wood destroying insects you see it a lot i have it at home but my house isn't for sale then we have some cracks between the brick and mortar it looks like that's been sealed this is the upstairs window facing north what we don't see above these windows is weep holes like these weep holes down here and you're supposed to have weep holes over your fenestrations. Fenestrations are doors. Now, if you look at these windows, and I hope the camera picks this up, but we have these faux muntins inside the double pane glass. And they're metal and they're conductive and glass is an insulator. So when you see these stains on the muntins, then that tells you that moisture has gotten in between those panes and the pane has been compromised. So these windows are probably original to the house, so that should be taken into consideration and we're budgeting for repairs. A lawn sprinkler head shouldn't be closer than 12 inches to the structure. Again, something you see quite often, but it shouldn't be. Uh, all these bushes should be cut back away from the house so that you get some breeze behind it and you don't, it's not conducive to carpenter ants. 
So it's double pane, metal frame windows. We're over here now, we're on the west side of the house. This is swimming pool equipment. Okay, this is a DE filter. It's got 10 pounds of PSI. This is the inline chlorinator. These are the controls. This pump has been bonded, grounded, excuse me. You don't have to bond it. Now, this filter is sitting on top of some wood slats to keep it level. That's probably not the best way to handle that. These lines should have been labeled to tell you which direction the water's going, what's, what's happening with the valve. And it'd also be nice if there was a service light above this so that you could look at your pool equipment in the dark. What we have here, this is the only one I've seen so far, but that's called an expansion joint by some people and a control joint by others. I prefer a control joint. And it's supposed to be sealed with a mastic sealer. Um, we expect these walls to move. We do live in North Texas. This is expansive clay soil. It expands and contracts about three inches between completely hydrated and dehydrated. And so we expect some movement. You have control joints in the street because they expect the street to move. It's those lines in the street. That's the way they do it. And this feels like it's a mastic, this feels like it's a mastic sealer here. I don't know why they painted it all white. And it, it seems to be in pretty good shape actually until you get to the very top. <coughs> Excuse me. There's a little bit of separation up there. But um, but all in all, that's, I've seen worse. I've seen more attractive, but I've seen worse condition. These are two condensing units. This one's the north one, this one's the south one. I believe this one is probably the upstairs, but or downstairs, excuse me, but we'll find out. Reading it is very difficult because the manufacturer's data plate has been faded out. That's my chalk on there, trying to pull some information off of it. This one I believe is the upstairs one, but it makes sense that this would be the downstairs one because those are the ones that statistically fail more often. These do not have anti theft Schrader valves. Uh, that's old style foam that's no longer acceptable. They want a harder foam that's, that doesn't break down like this is breaking down. These coils are dirty. These coils are dirty and bent. This unit's not level. These are your disconnects and they should be sealed. I couldn't open the dead front on this one because it's got a pull plug on it. So that prohibits me. I had to de-energize the system. It's not what I do. We got all this wood debris over here in the corner that should be picked up. But overall, I'm not seeing a lot of exterior wall stress. I haven't been in the back yet. I reserve the right to change my mind. The roof looks like it's a recent, uh, has been replaced sometime in the recent future. There's some scuff marks over on the east side. But that's uh, pretty much wraps up the front interior this is the address plate it's a little distressed it could look better it's been some improvement again there's no weep holes over the door lintel there so 